Crepe is an elegant drapey fabric that's ideal for making garments such as tops, dresses, skirts, and even accessories like headbands and scarves. This fabric can be made with polyester, silk, or wool, but if you're a beginner, you'll want to start with the polyester. Not only is it more economical, but a little easier to work with. For this demonstration, I'll be using a poly crepe de chine that was generously provided by Spoonflower. Check out the description for a link to any of the fabrics used in this tutorial. The biggest issues in working with crepe are, the fabric can be slippery so pieces aren't cut evenly or slip when sewing seams. Seams can be puckered or don't appear neat. The fabric frays so the seam edges inside will look sloppy. I'll be providing tips so when you sew with this beautiful fabric, you can do so with confidence and have great results. Cutting out your fabric pieces accurately ensures that you'll have an easier sewing experience. But if the fabric is more on the slippery side, this can make it difficult. One method for accuracy is to cut using a rotary cutter. This will keep the fabric flat on your cutting mat and less likely to shift. If you want to use scissors, make sure to use sharp fabric shears and lots of super fine straight pins to prevent fabric snags. You could also keep the fabric more stable by pinning tissue paper underneath the fabric to make it easier. Or if you check the care instructions and the fabric is washable, spray it with spray starch. Here's an example of untreated fabric and one that's been starched. You can see the one is a little stiffer. After you finish your project, you can wash the starch out. Let's talk about needle and thread. For poly crepe, I recommend using a fine cotton or poly cotton thread. If your fabric is silk, you can use a silk thread. Your sewing machine needle should be new and I recommend using a Microtex needle size 68 or 7010. It's very frustrating to do all your careful prep work and then you end up with either puckered or wavy seam lines. Here are some tips you can use to help. Adjust your thread tension. Sometimes puckered seams means that your thread tension is a bit too tight, so choose a lower number. You also might want to increase the presser foot tension so that it holds the fabric more securely and keeps it from slipping. If you're still having issues, try placing a strip of tissue paper underneath the fabric. The tissue paper not only works as a temporary stabilizer, but keeps the fabric from getting sucked through the needle plate. After you finish your stitch, simply tear the tissue paper off. Also, if you use spray starch on your fabric, you should notice that it'll be a lot easier to sew because the starch also acts as a stabilizer. If your fabric layers are shifting on you so that your seam ends up uneven, you can use a walking foot when sewing and this will ensure that the layers are being fed more evenly as it goes through the machine. When sewing a regular straight seam, you'll want to finish the raw edges because this type of fabric will fray and look less neat over time. If you don't have an overlock machine, you can sew a zigzag stitch or overcast stitch with your sewing machine on the raw edges. Other ideal seams for this type of fabric are the French seam and hairline seam. Check our channel for tutorials on these two types of seams. You want to make sure that your hem doesn't look too heavy for such a fine fabric. The ideal hem can either be a blind hem or the rolled hem. We have tutorials on how to create these types of hems as well. When pressing crepe, make sure that you're using the correct iron temperature setting. For polyester, you'll use a synthetic setting and silk will use a silk setting. A really high heat setting could damage your fabric. For added protection of your fabric, use a press cloth and iron on the wrong side of the fabric. Once you get the hang of working with crepe, there's a lot of lovely things from casual to formal that you can make. If you have any tips about working with this fabric, please leave a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Click on the playlist below to see other tutorials we referenced in this video. Also, make sure to check out Spoonflower's YouTube channel for other inspiring projects made with their fabric. Thanks for watching.